So I just watched Master Blaster, and can, can we please be consistent on whether or not lava actually kills a transformer or not, please? Also known as the episode where we just can't get beyond Thunderdome, this is Megatron pulling off one more of his grand schemes. Now, to be fair, we only had one episode that built up to it, but you can tell it is something that he had in the works for a while. His plan is to gain the spark of the original Megatron and power up just the way Optimus Prime did. It's a big gamble. You're toying with history here, as well as uh, potentially mutating yourself into something you can't control. But you know what? You know what? You know what? Everyone is taking risks for power-ups these days, so we might as well just run with it, right? Uh, this starts with Waspinator getting an assignment to run, essentially run distraction, and it is actually 100% successful. I cannot remember the last time Waspinator had a mission that went this well, even though he got clapped literally, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Um, but the plot here, the plot here is we have a mech suit. We have a mech suit piloted by Quick Strike, the smallest of the Predacons, now in a big suit that matches Optimal Optimus, the biggest of the Maximals, hence the Master Blaster reference from Mad Max. So... The idea here is that with Prime lured out, they are going to essentially inject him with a control module that literally like drills from his foot all and then walk like spider walks or in, in one case squid swims all the way up into Prime Spark Chamber just so they could uh, forcibly remote control Optimal Optimus from this uh, big uh, mech design, this mech thing that uh, Quick Strike's piloting. It's a weird plan, and uh, one where, like, I kind of wonder why they didn't try that sooner. Uh, because it works really well. It actually works, like, too well. Because obviously, Primal is way more powerful than the other Maximals at this point, and at one time, uh, literally, the only two Maximals who are still functional and online are Black Arachnia and Depth Charge, who is completely MIA for the entire episode for seemingly no reason. If Megatron had just continued to knock out Maximals as they had come through the door, he could have won the entire Beast Wars. Uh, if he just started like throwing Maximals into the lava pits instead of putting them in a cage, he would have won the entire Beast Wars. This is, again, where Megatron is a very smart character, but every now and then, for the sake of cartoon logic, he has to do very dumb things. Uh, and it it, it, it it undermines him a little bit. Not gonna lie, it undermines him a little bit. Uh, so, uh, let's see, where were my notes? Um, yeah, it, it is one of his most effective plans. Uh, it really, like, the, really the only things he didn't account for is the fact that this is an episode where you get to see Black Arachnia's Transmetal 2 powers, which is telekinesis. Uh, Cheetor certainly didn't get to have that. Uh, and once again, taking out Rampage solo to do it, uh, which is, it, I don't know if it says how powerful Black Arachnia has become, or if it's just how far fallen Rampage is, that he's just not... The unstoppable monster he was when we first saw him. <sighs> oh well. Uh, more to the point. More to the point. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, th there's another plot hole here. There's another plot hole here. So, uh, this whole plan was essentially to get the access codes to the Ark. Which, when they were designing this plan in the previous episode, Megatron mentioned... Uh, you know, like they, they surmise that Optimus got the codes from Black Arachnia when she was at risk of going offline. Uh, and Megatron mentions that will fit in nicely with the plan we have for him. So what was plan A? Because Megatron wanted to get into the Ark. What was plan A if Black Arachnia kept a hold of the codes and Primal didn't get them? This is why I mentioned, like, if she had passed it off to Rhinox or even Rattrap, this plan wouldn't have worked. It only works because it was with Optimal. So who is... What was plan A here? 
Because if plan A was to just punch Maximals as they come through the door, hey, you should have stuck with plan A because it was working. It was working real good. Uh, also, once again, we see Cheetor completely beaten to a pulp and no uh, no self-repairing thing that Transmetal 2s can do. I'm really frustrated when they like introduce abilities and then completely forget to use them. But then again, Transmetal 2 seem to like very wildly in what powers they get. We'll see that again later in this episode. So, while I do have like my critiques about why this plan really should have been smarter than it was, uh, it is a plan that does seem like a logical step. If Optimus got so much power from absorbing the original Prime Spark, I could clearly do the same by getting the original Megatron Spark. All right. That's fair. That's a fair conclusion for Megatron to go through. I am kind of surprised he didn't attempt it earlier, and I kind of wish that he had, not only because Primal has desperately needed something that could stand up to him power-wise, so they don't just have to keep, like, knocking him out every episode. Like, this is another example of, like, uh, like they're writing around how powerful Optimal Optimus is by essentially removing him from the episode for, like, a good half of the, of the overall episode, right? Um, they did, you know, they did that in previous episodes in season three, but with, with Transmetal 2 Megatron, that's not an issue. He has someone who he can compete with. Um, so the crux to all of this is that Tarantulas and Quickstrike either renewed their partnership or never lost it in the first place because they're in on this to actually oust Megatron. And once he's got the spark for Megatron inside him, the original, uh, Quick Strike grabs him with the big primal mech and throws him into the lava. You know, because that took out Scorponok and Pterosaur, I guess. I guess we can try it on Megatron, too. Uh, which, number one, um, you threw the original Megatron spark in there, which would probably much, pretty much guarantee the Autobots would win way sooner than they did, and who knows what happens to Predacons then. Good job. Good job there. Um, but also, it it doesn't work. It doesn't work, which is weird because like this is like this is one of the rare moments where Megatron didn't seem to have a backup plan. It didn't seem to have a safety net. He didn't have like a contingency going here. The only like backup he would have had would have been uh, Dinobot Two, who he sent to go get Depth Charge, which, as we said, just stand at the door and punch Maximals. It worked. He didn't need to go hunting anybody down. Uh, uh, but yeah, like, it's just weird that he just left himself completely vulnerable like this. Uh, so, okay, so I joke about it here in the episode, but, like, Megatron obviously rises up from the lava in Transmetal 2 form, completely fine. Uh, Tarantulas gets thrown into lava for his trouble, too. He's burned up, but he's still functional. We're gonna make this clear. Standard... Beast Wars Transformers, yes, lava is lethal. Uh, trans metals, who have a stronger outer coating and are much more powerful uh, Transformers overall, no, lava is not lethal. So that there's where your consistency is, right? All right, so just getting that out of the way. Um, there's one thing I do like to point out here uh, before we continue, because like the rest of this is mostly the most of this is twofold. Well, one is just seeing Primal and Megatron battle it out in their super upgraded bodies, and they're basically a match for each other, with Megatron getting the upper hand. He, he can shoot fire and ice now, by the way. Um, you know, and it's, it, just, it took the combined forces of all the Maximals to drive off Megatron. But the other plot going on here is that Tarantulas is setting the arc to self-destruct. So, once again, we're trying to figure out what Tarantulas' deal is, because that would, shouldn't that wipe out everybody? We don't know. We don't know the twist to this yet, remember. So it just looks like he's trying to wipe out all Transformers at this point. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's going on. Um, and that's stopped by Black Arachnia, who claims that she... Remember, in previous episodes, she claims that, you know, she doesn't like the hero shtick. But she does seem to take some delight in what's going on. You know, she easily beats, uh, you know, she quips when she beats Rampage, and she even kind of smiles to herself when she beats Inferno. 
Um, and then, and yeah, and then if it's not enough that she took out two of Megatron's strongest Preds, uh, she's also the one who stops the Ark from blowing up. So for someone who claims to not like saving the day, she did a pretty good job of it, and she seemed to enjoy it while it was going on. So good on her. Uh, he, uh, face turn completed successfully. So overall, um, I'm giving the episode overall an enjoyable score. Um, it's great to see Megatron rising up and uh, gaining some more prominence. I really wish it had happened sooner because we're only going to get this form for uh, you know, like three more episodes. Um, yeah, and it would have been nice to have like a foil to Optimal Optimus the entire season. Um, so it just it's a little it's just comes too late. And yeah, like I said, there's problems with the plot when you start thinking about it logically and gauging that this worked, this is working fine. Why why did you break from this plan? This plan was working fine. But it is what it is, and it's still a good episode. It's still worth watching. So that is Master Blaster. We've got three episodes to go. Um, I'm probably going to do uh, Nemesis Part 1 and Part 2 the same day. So you know, only a couple more days of this Beast Wars reviewing thing. And then we get to start Beast Machines. <laughs> I'll see you then. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.